change its color. It has chatoyance. The way that wood shines. Very wow, Mila. Good job. My name is PJ Fetcher, and I'm a high school teacher. As a hobby, I'm a sawmill operator, woodworker, and just a friendly neighbor with a crane. But the role that I'm most proud of, however, is being a husband and a father. We live in Davie, Florida, which is pretty close to Fort Lauderdale, and if I'm talking to people from other states or countries, I just say Miami. As far as woodworking is concerned, I'm not classically trained by any means. Uh, to be honest, I'm not actually classically trained in anything. Uh, music, maybe, but uh, everything else I do has just been a learning curve involving challenging myself, setting goals, and watching YouTube. If you were to tell me that I'd be where I am and do what I do 10 years ago, I think you're crazy and that's impossible. The mere fact that I'm here in front of your camera right now proves that you simply need to have passion and patience for something in order to attain it. Whenever I show people what I do, most of them say, um, I bet your wife really loves having all this equipment and wood in the yard. But with a quick smile, I can confidently say that she supports me 100%. Obviously, I get out of hand sometimes and I might go too far with some ideas and she's always there to bring me back to reality. That being said, no part of this would be possible without her. That's all I wrote. I've got mahogany. I've got some laurel oak, I've got, I've got some lace wood, some tamarind, some live oak. Come check it out. So I'm a self-proclaimed sawyer, uh, crane operator, urban lumberjack. I've been called an urban lumberjack by some of my friends. What I do is I reclaim trees that are going to be taken down for either having a disease or they're too close to someone's foundation or they're a hazard for whatever reason, and I make slabs out of them. I, I turn them into usable lumber. So this is a species called black limba, or uh, Terminalia superba. The superba means it's like the better one in the species, uh, because this particular tree grew to about 140 feet tall, uh, which made it what's called a champion tree, which means it's the, um, the tallest of its species in the whole state. We got hit with uh, Hurricane Irma three and a half years ago and snapped this tree up, snapped it off at the base. So I cut it up into 16 foot logs, got the whole thing out, slapped the whole thing, and I've only got four pieces left. So that was, uh, that was a lot of tables. Yeah, just come back here every now and then and check on all of them, you know? <laughs> when my wife and I moved into our first home, Obviously, all of the money that we had went to buying the home. I'm a pretty good scavenger. People throw away pretty nice pieces of furniture, you know, so if I could get there before the rain came, uh, that's how I got our first dining room table. I was looking at it, and I look at my wife, and I look at the house that we have, and as the man of the house, I always want to improve. You know, I always want to be able to provide, you know, better and better and better and, and just be better. I just finished cutting the grass, and I come inside, I had a glass of iced tea or something and I, I put the glass iced tea on the table and it felt like the glass was going to go through the table because it was just some thin particle board, veneer, whatever. And that's when I got the idea to make a table. I'm like, I have tools, I can do this. Finish the project, whatever. You know, by today's standards, me looking back at that project, it was awful. You know, it was bad. My wife's friends would come over, and my friends would come over, and they'd say, oh wow, this is so cool, you made this table, that's awesome. You know, you should try and, you should try and sell these on Etsy or, or Craigslist or something. So I did, I, I think I listed my first table for a couple hundred bucks on Craigslist. And the next day, somebody came and picked it up, thought it was gorgeous, and they took it to their house, and then I turned around and I'm like, oh no, we don't have a table anymore, I gotta build another one. So I did. And that one was a little bit better. I did the same thing. Just say, hey, it worked once, let me try it again. You see where I'm going with this. Like the, the trend was, you know, every week or so we'd have a different table. And our friends would come over and say exactly that. They'd say, you know, hey, every time we come in here, they, it's like you have a different dining room table. It's like the evolution of tables. I'm like, that's a good idea right there. That's going to be my business name. And that was nine years ago. And um, here we are. Look at this curl. Like, 
because it's this is basically like the armpit of a tree so if you can imagine like you know I'm the I'm the trunk and there's a branch that sticks out this way over the whole lifetime of the tree gravity pulling down is compressing the wood that's here right so that since all the cells are trying to grow at the same rate these are like I think of it as like the Himalayan mountains like just a compression of all the cells together they've got to go somewhere so they create these cool folds and then when you take a slice right through the middle of them look at that like with water on it that looks so beautiful In my, in my opinion, it was a really cool project. I did what I called an inverse river table, right? So usually you see a river table where it's the two slabs and then you have a nice curvy river down the center. It's been done a, a million times. And I'm like, I, I like them, you know, because it makes seemingly useless boards into a useful surface to use as a table. Like epoxy has its place. So I, I had a strip of rosewood down the center and then on either side, the banks of the river were the white epoxy. Just trying to be different, of course. You know how the internet works. I'm just doing the opposite of what everyone else is doing. And I thought it was such a cool project. Um, it's still not sold. <laughs> I made it like three years ago. I still have it. But it was, I, I, that was my favorite table that I've ever made. Yeah, I thought it looked awesome, uh, but nobody else thinks the same thing. <laughs> The coolest thing about this whole process is that you're literally the first person every time to see what's been inside here for 60 years. This whole thing here is a scab. You know, like if you get a cut on your arm and scabs over, it heals. This is the tree healing itself right here. And this would have been a branch that came out this way. I thought you were going to say baby iguana. I got so excited. Everything I do is, is for, for, for my kids and for my wife. I, I think that's the job of, of a dad, you know, to be a father figure, to be a, a leader of a family. I feel like that's what I'm here for. And that's what I, you know, I, I get a kick out of it. I love doing it. <laughs> it's not very smooth, Dad. You need to learn how to sharpen chains, Dad. This is uh, Bob Roth's New River Groves. It's like the next street over from us and they serve really good food. It's convenient, so we come here all the time. What did I say about my kids? There was an interview a while ago with um, Steve Irwin. Somebody was interviewing Steve Irwin and I remember watching it and when he started talking about his kids, I'm a big fan of Steve Irwin because he was super passionate about stuff and I, I dig that. I like people with passion. And when the interviewer asked him about his kids, he started to cry. And that is the only other person that I know of at least that just, just from talking about his kids, they start to get emotional. And like they just mean, not even, not even kids, but just like that topic means so much to that person and then take it so seriously that it makes him cry. Isn't that beautiful? See? It looks like a, like a Dr. Seuss 6. It looks really good. I really look up to people like that, that are that passionate about stuff. Because you know they're telling the truth, you know? Hi, I'm Mila Fetcher. And the thing that I'm going to... Mila, you don't have to say hi every time. So we're gonna see PJ Fetcher's. My dad's. My dad's. <laughs> tool that he's gonna use to cut the giant piece of wood. Yes. I know my kids are gonna learn it because they're, they're around me all the time. They just copy what I do. So I almost don't have to say anything to my daughter and she's over there on the scroll saw like cutting out shapes of penguins and sea turtles and stuff like that. She loves being in the shop and working with me. So like I almost don't even have to say anything to her but 
Uh, we'll see about Mikey. Like, <laughs> This tree actually came down in Hurricane Irma, um, and I was able to take two slabs, cut them up into small pieces, and get all the tables for this whole restaurant uh, out of them. Me and Chris, we knew uh, Jeff from a long time ago, and he's the guy that opened up this place, so as soon as he needed tables, he came to us right away. I think they look pretty cool, you know? The thing I like best about this community of whatever you want to call them, woodworkers, makers, uh, the whole like Instagram, YouTube, social media family of, of people that do similar things is one of the better things that's, that's ever happened to me. For learning, for confidence, for uh, having a network of people that get stuff done, it's awesome. I have to attribute most of it to my buddy Chris of Cowdog Craftworks. He's really the one that kind of got me out of my shell as far as posting more on Instagram, talking to people, you know, if you have a question, feel free to reach out to somebody. And that's something I would never do before I met Chris. Did you see that? I hope you guys saw that. That was fantastic. So, how was everyone's day? Being in a community like this where I can idolize people that are way better at stuff than I am, and I look up to people for, for near a, almost near a decade, I've been following some of these people, and then go to an event like WorkbenchCon and be able to have a normal conversation with them. Uh, well, as, as normal as I can be, I guess, like instead of, <laughs> unless I get nervous. But, uh, you know, be able to ask them questions and learn that they're real people and they have the same problems that you have with woodworking, with sawmilling, with whatever. Um, it's just really, really nice. So this is definitely not how you're supposed to make a, a nice box. But since it's for Justin, I'm just doing it quickly so that he can leave me alone. <laughs> I don't ever want to grow so much where the quality of what I do has to suffer because of it. I enjoy being the guy that's start to finish. You know, like some of my YouTube idols that are start to finish type of people, like cut down the tree, mill the tree, let the wood dry, pull a slab from a stack that you think looks cool and make something from it, and then take a picture of that piece of furniture that you built next to where that tree was cut down, that to me is the essence of, of uh, you know, being a woodworker. You'll never see me cheer for a tree falling. You'll see me just watch it fall and have that kind of like somber moment, like, you know, like, thanks for what you've done over the past hundred years. Um, now I'm gonna make something cool out of you, you know, in the most respectful way possible. I'm a, I'm a very, like, sentimental person. So I'll look at a tree and I'll think about, what has that tree seen? It's a 200 year old tree. Think about what's happened in the last 200 years. Not just in this country, but around the, you know, around the world. What is that, what weather events has that tree seen? What little kids took their one-year-old photo shoot in front of that tree when it was way smaller? You know, people that have seen that tree throughout its life are dead now. Uh, you know, like generations upon generations can have memories at the same tree. And it's just like a, to me it's a, I don't know, it's, a, it's just a nice thing.
I need, literally need to build another building because I never plan on throwing anything away that she gives me, you know? Like, it's, it's very, uh, gets you, gets you right here. Like the cholesterol. <laughs>